Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, don't forget to share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. That's the only way you can help your friends explore my channel and they might also like what I'm doing and to keep me refreshed, energized and inspired then don't also forget to subscribe. I discuss absolute maximum moment in, the, in beams due to three equal concentrated live loads equally spaced each meter apart. So let's have the principle then after that let's apply the results. So if the beam is long compared to the total distance between the three equally spaced loads then the maximum moment the absolute maximum moment occurs at the center by placing the center load also coincides with the center of the beam as shown in the figure so these three because they are closely spaced apart will cause great bending on the beam so if the total distance between the first and the last load of these three equally spaced uh, force, forces or loads is less than the length of the bead and that should be the position to cause maximum or absolute maximum moment in the beam which of course at the center so this is the center and because of symmetry the reaction at A and B will be equal total load divided by 2 so that is L over 2 and the reaction here at A and the reaction at B will be equal and it is the reaction at A will be half of the total of 3 halves B. So we cut the center, we have shear and moment positive direction. So the technique for absolute maximum moment is we consider the left portion of the cutting section and consider the forces to the left and take moment about the center so it is equal to mc max absolute mc absolute rather or m absolute max is 3 halves three p times l over 2 then minus ph so 3 halves p times l over 2 is just take moment about the center line considering the forces to the left then minus p times h so that's simplifying 3 pl over 4 minus ph so that's the absolute maximum moment for this case now what if the beam is short and the possibility is we use the principle before that the absolute maximum moment occurs under the load especially the heaviest load when that load and the resultant of the loads are positioned such that the center line will be midway between them so the possibility is one load will be of span as shown if the length of the beam is short because if we position it at the center although they will fit at the center the left and the right most loads will be close to the supports and they cannot cause a great bending on the beam but if we only consider two horses we allow the other to be off span these two will be close to the center which will have a great possibility that the maximum moment, absolute maximum moment, occurs under one of the loads as the principle before. So, which is possible by symmetry, the resultant of these two equ equally spaced loads will be at the center. So, it will be off span and it will be on the ground or on the other road then it will not cause bending on this shorter beam 
So that's the resultant, which is equal to 2p only because only two loads left on the span. And because of symmetry, the distance between the resultant and this left load will be half of h. So that is e, and half of h is e, which is h over 2. If this is the center line, therefore, the distance from the center line to the leftmost load is half of h over 2, so h over 4, in the same way that the distance of r from the center line is also h over 4. So, because that's L over 2, and that is, therefore, L over 2 minus h over 4. So, this is also L over 2 minus h over 4, the distance of the resultant from the right. So, we can solve for Ra so that we can have uh, maximum absolute moment under the load which is just Ra times that distance if you cut that section so the absolute maximum moment is Ra times that moment arm where the moment arm is L over 2 minus H over 4 but that we have to derive Ra first by summing up moments about B and that is Ra times L equals R which is 2 P times L over 2 minus H over 4 from principle by Varictons. The moment of the resultant is equal to the sum of the moments of its components. So we use the resultant. It's the same. So Ra therefore is 2 P over L times quantity L over 2 minus H over 4 so that the absolute maximum moment for this case is Ra times L over 2 minus H over 4. So it becomes 2P over L times L over 2 minus H over 4 times another L over 2 times L over 2 minus H over 4. So if we simplify this, M absolute max 2 is, if we factor out 4, this is 6. This is 2P over L quantity L over 2 h over 4 quantity square which reduces to this because this is supposedly 2L or if we simplify 2L over 2L minus h over 4 quantity square and 4 square is 16 so if we factor out 16 here 2P over 16 is P over 8L and we have 2L minus h quantity square so that's already algebra verify that. So the idea therefore if either of these cases controls either case 1 or case 2 controls then there must be a value of L in such a way that either case 1 or case 2 controls. So the idea therefore is we equate these two uh, absolute maximum moment, moment possibility so that we can derive that L. So 3P over 3PL over 4 minus PH equals P over 8L 2L minus H quantity square. Let's cancel out P common. So 3 fourths of L minus H equals 1 over 8L 2L minus H quantity square. Let's expand this quantity inside the squared terms binomial so 3L over 4 minus H equal 1 over 8L 4L square minus 4LH plus H square distribute 8L so 3 fourths L minus H equals L over 2 minus H over 2 plus H square over 8 multiply everything by 8L and Combine like terms, so L over 2 minus 3 fourths L is negative L over 4. Negative H over 2 plus H is positive H over 2. And we have H squared over 8L. Multiply everything by 8L, so we have, and we have negative 2L square plus 4LH plus H square, then equal 0. So rearranging 2L square minus 4HL or 4LH minus H square equals 0. 
using the quadratic uh, formula for L L equals negative B plus minus square root of B square minus 4AC all over 2A where A is 2 B is negative 4H the variable is L let's make L the variable and C is negative H squared into this equation so L is negative of negative 4H plus minus square root of negative 4H squared minus 4 times 2 times negative H squared all over 2 times A which is 2 so this is 16 plus 8 H squared so 24 H squared square root of 24 H squared is 2 square root of 6 times H so L is 4H plus minus 2 square root of 6H all over 4 simplifying if you use minus the entire value would be negative so we should use plus so L therefore is 1 plus 0.5 square root of 6 times 8 so this is the value of 8 so that either case 1 or case 2 governs or controls for computing absolute maximum moment so either case 1 or case 2 controls if the length is exactly equal to this expression when L is greater than this value and that would be case 1 and the absolute maximum moment will be equal to this although I derive this which is equal to that but as much as possible we only position the load so that we can easily derive this you might forget you might forget this formula when we will have another topic so what is important is the positioning of the loads and it's easy to derive this formula after you position the loads same is true with this so a max would be 3p over 3PL over 4 minus PH and for case 2 when L is less than this value then M max would be P over 8L quantity 2L minus 8 square M absolute max P over 8L quantity 2L minus 8 quantity square so that's it for this discussion I hope that Learn a, you learn a lot for this discussion and let's apply this on the next slide so let's have the application of the preceding results three equal concentrated loads each of magnitude 50 kilonewtons so this is p r to cross a simple span girder the distance between the loads is six so this is eight six meters and the span will be letter A 12.4 meters, letter B 13.348 meters, and letter C 15 meters. Determine the absolute maximum moment in the girder. So let's evaluate uh, the value of L for which either case 1 or case 2 governs. And the formula was uh, quantity 1 plus 0.5 square root of 6 close times h so l for case 1 is less than 1 plus 0.5 square root of 6 times h which is 6 because the value of 1 plus 0.5 square root of 6 times 6 is 13.348 so 12.4 is less than 13.348 meters therefore because the length of the beam is shorter case 2 controls and the formula for case 2 is P over 8L quantity 2L minus 8 square absolute maximum moment. So M absolute max for case 2 is P over 8L quantity 2L minus 8 quantity square. Quantity 2L minus 8 square. So P is 50 kilonewtons, length is 12.4, and H is 6, so substitute 50 over 8 times 12.4 quantity 2 times 12.4 minus 6 quantity square so it is equal to 178.1 kilonewton meter so 
if you use the formula right away and you decide it is case 1, uh, 3PL over 4 minus PH, then it will give us lesser value. So for part B, the length is exactly equal to this expression, 13.348 meters, therefore either case 1 or case 2 controls. And let us show that the results will be the same if you use case 1 and if you use this formula for case 2. So either case 1 or case 2 governs. So using the formula for case 1, M absolute max is 1 3 PL over 4 minus PH. So substitute 3 times 50 times 13.348 over 4 minus 50 times 6. Uh, absolute maximum moment is 200.6 kN. If you use the formula in case 2, which is 8 over P, 8 P over 8 L quantity 2 L minus 8 square, then you have 50 over 8 times 13.348 quantity 2 times 13.348 minus 6 squared and it will give us the same value of 200.6 kilonewton meters so that shows that they are really the same when the length of the beam is equal to this finally when length is 15 15 is greater than quantity 1 plus 0.5 6 square root of 0.5 square root of 6 quantity times 6 so therefore case 1 controls and or governs so we use the formula for case 1 absolute maximum moment 3 pl over 4 minus ph so m absolute max equals 3 times 50 times 15 over 4 minus 50 times 6 so the absolute maximum moment is equal to 262.5 kilonewton meter so that's it for this problem. I hope that I clearly discussed the solution and you were able to follow.